I have heard so many good things about the faculty of Ozegin University, the students and the infrastructure that you have. And I'm really pleased that finally I'm here and I can actually observe this by myself. So my presentation will be a bit different from the previous ones, that it's actually what we can do, not in terms of technology and infrastructure, but actually in terms of innovative thinking in order to deal with passengers processing. Okay, And this is a case study, an actual project that I have participated in 2007, uh, that it was uh, the development of the operational plan for Athens International Airport during the 2007 Champions League final. I assume that most of you are football fans, right? So do you remember the teams in the 2007 Champions League final? No? <laughs> it's okay, it's Liverpool and Milan. It was the same as it was 2005 here in Istanbul. So, just a background, the night after the final, of the, uh, after the end of the game, the airport had to process 25,000 additional passengers. The night until the morning. And the hourly capacity of the airport was only 4,000 passengers per hour. So we needed to find innovative ways to process them and also develop temporary infrastructure. So, just a quick background about myself. My name is Konstantinos Kalianis. All my life is aviation. As you can see, my academic qualifications, I have two masters and a PhD in aviation, air transport management from Cranfield and the PhD airline branding from Cranfield. My second master's in airport planning and management from Loughborough. And then I have a triple career, academic, airport training and consulting, all focused in aviation. So I'm in a different parts of the world in terms of academic. I'm the head of the aviation programs in KSU in Lithuania, visiting associate professor in IUBH Berlin, in Habak Helia in Helsinki, and at the Hellenic American University, both in Greece and the US. And I'm, develop, I'm delivering professional training for airports, for uh, GCAS, the Gold Center of Aviation Studies in Abu Dhabi, Oman Airports, Moscow, Salala, Riyadh, Kuwait, etc. And a range of different consulting projects from airport privatizations, airport operational manuals development and certification, capacity assessment, forecast, etc. So whatever you need, please feel free to ask me after the end of my presentation. So my company, the service that it delivers in the parts of the world that it's currently active. And here, today we're in Istanbul and there are some huge opportunities, okay? Istanbul and Turkey are the next big thing for aviation. Why is that? First of all, Istanbul city, so I've seen it myself also, it's a very beautiful city that has a lot of things to offer. According to, to the 2016 data, it was the 15th most visited city in the world in terms of arrival. And, and it had 9 million inbound arrivals. You have Turkish Airlines that according to 2017 data, it had 68 million passengers. Plus, you have 27 million passengers of Pegasus. And Atlas Global, uh, Global you had 6.5, combined the schedule and the charter. You have the new Istanbul Airport that's going to be the biggest airport in the world, with a capacity of 200 million annual passengers with state-of-the-art facilities and having passenger comfort at the heart of the design. And actually also Sabina Conchen International Airport that in 2017 had 31 million annual passenger traffic and now develops the new facilities that we've seen in the morning, 241 million passengers. And it is the fastest was the fastest growing airport for seven consecutive years. Okay, so now we can see there is a huge opportunity. As I have said with the discussions with you, it's like a surfer. Now there is a huge wave. It's a huge opportunity for aviation in Turkey and in Istanbul. So what are extreme traffic peak operations? Okay. As you know, every airport, in terms of the terminal, it's designed and planned according to the 40th or 30th peak hour. Why is that? Because if you actually develop an airport based on its forecasted absolute peak, the highest peak, you will result in very high capex 
capital expenditure, and also very high OPEX, operational expenditure, because airports are very expensive to develop and also operate. So there are different occasions that actually the airport has to handle passenger traffic much more than it actually has been planned and designed for. One such example is like events like the Champions League final or the Olympic Games. Okay, it's very different because in terms of Champions League final, you have more passenger traffic in shorter period of time. And Olympic Games, usually the, it's more spread out the traffic, but you have much higher pressure in the baggage handling system. So what happens when an airport has to handle extreme passenger traffic, which it has, not be, has not been designed to handle? What happens in terms of the passenger quality of service, in, in terms of security and safety measures that because of legislation, they must be adhered? And actually, the airport needs to also maintain its normal opera, uh, airport operation. It, it, because there are cases that if you have this, particularly if it's football related, and you have riots and that, also it affects the normal airport operations. So that was the 2007 Champions League final in Athens, 23rd of May. And uh, I'm going to present what was the project in developing this operational plan, highlighting the key issues, challenges, and solutions, innovative solutions that we jointly came with Athens International Airport Management Team, and actually what we've done in order to enhance temporarily the airport capacity, the terminal. So we said that actually every terminal is actually developed based on its peak hour design day forecast, and it hasn't been designed to handle this type of traffic, extreme passenger traffic situations. Here's the definition of what capacity is, which is the limit when reach or exceed affects an airport operations and level of service. Okay, here it's the maximum capacity, which is actually, it can be achieved at a particular time, but it cannot be sustainable for a longer period of time. So that's what we have done. This is Athens International Airport. It was opened in 2001. It was designed to handle 25 million annual passengers. The hourly capacity is 6,000 two-way PICAR passengers and 4,000 one-way PICAR passengers. So, the objectives of the plan is to provide the best arriving and departing experience for passengers as possible based on the constraints that we have. Facilitate the, the processing of unusually large volume of passengers to conduct and protect the normal airport operators and at the same time meet the same security requirements and ensure that all stakeholders, stakeholders are committed to the plan. Because during such occasions, you don't have just the airport, the airlines and the ground handlers, you have other stakeholders. Can you guess what are other stakeholders for this particular event? Government, exactly, and you have also the police. You have riot police that is involved because of the high-risk passenger type of the, of the funds. And for these reasons, you also have additional security measures. And also, you need to find ways how the officials, the football players, the owners of the teams, and their, their wives will actually be processed separately, away from the public contact. Other features of the plan, in order to be successful, we had a de dedicated management team that started from January. So actually, it had five months to prepare. We needed to have additional resourcing and staff because the final was actually, uh, it was during the night time. And actually, we needed much higher resources the night after the final, where most, most of the charter traffic were scheduled to depart. So we needed to find ways to provide incentives and get from the airport community volunteers to go and help. We have also to take in consideration contingency and emergency planning. Okay, from very simple contingency and planning, what will happen if there is extra time or if there is penalty kick, 
too much more complicated. What will happen if there is a terrorism attack and what we'll need to have, what other airports we can use instead, etc. So for that reason, we needed to do a lot of tests and trials. You need to have a clear communications flow before, but actually also at the night of the operations. And actually, we need to ensure that there is commitment and accessibility from all stakeholders involved. So the key success factors, you need to have cooperation and preparation of, of all the Athens airport community. Appropriate resourcing of the staff and actually equipment, because as we will see later on, we had actually to develop temporary facilities and actually use underutilized facilities with additional equipment and staff. And extensive and detailed planning, operational flexibility, and tightly coordinated delivery. So, Liverpool and Milan. Milan won, 2 1. So, the key challenges first, you have a large arrival and departure wave. Total, there's around 25,000 additional departing passengers in one day. Okay, you remember what, what we said the one way capacity, passenger capacity of Athens International Airport was only four. So, it was impossible all the passengers to arrive at the same time at the airport because the airport will have to close down. So, we need to find innovative ways how to control the flow from the stadium to the airport. Also, another challenge, we didn't know the mix, which will be the teams from the beginning. Because we start developing the plan from January. So actually, what we were studying, we look at the different scenarios. What will happen if two teams are Schengen? What will happen if there is two extra Schengen? And what will happen if there is one Schengen and one extra Schengen? OK, finally, you had one Schengen and one extra Schengen. And then another very important element of the plan is to find ways in order to have the two sets of funds separate. Okay, and actually we're very successful to that because there was only a couple of funds, actually Milan funds, that actually went towards the staging area of Liverpool. It was when Milan has won and they were going, and we were going ciao, ciao. So it created a bit of tension, but that was just, just this incident. So can you imagine what will happen if we had the funds mixing from a longer period of time. We also had to protect the main terminal building of the airport. Okay, so these are all the challenges. So what are the steps? First of all, we need to forecast the Champions League final related traffic. How we do that? We do benchmarks from previous, from previous finals. And actually, I told you it was, it was quite, likely, quite lucky that we had Milan and Liverpool two years before in Istanbul. So actually, we used the same schedule initially, and then we updated when we received the schedule confirmations, but it was a very good start. Then we carry out gap analysis to see which facilities, which actually facilities were not sufficient to meet this additional demand. Then we try to find ways, concepts, and procedures for enhancing the terminal capacity. Okay, in terms of the air site, it's impossible. It's based on uh, legislation. Uh, if uh, uh, you cannot actually, there is not much thing you can do. But in terms of the terminal, there is always innovative solutions in order to enhance the capacity provision, provisionally and temporarily. So we look at the different infrastructural changes, staffing and training. We, that's why we start developing this plan from January in order to have all the stakeholders committed and know the different scenarios. We established appropriate, appropriate roles because it was a huge logistical operations and we needed to find the right persons for the right job. From the, in terms of their managerial skills, who are actually good in taking decision making on the spot, to actually other skills like, for example, language skills. For the ones that had actually were speaking Italian, we actually, uh, we, uh, we actually allocate them in the areas that we had the Milan funds. We look at the contingency and emergency pl planning together with the police and the rescue and firefighting services. And then we're responsible for the coordination and cooperation. So that, that was actually 
the forecast of the traffic for the night immediately after the final, based on the schedule, the part, departing schedules of the flights, of the charter flights, the slots I received, and actually assuming that the passengers will arrive two hours before the departure flight. So you see, in UTC times, you will need 18,000 capacity. And the airport had only 4,000. So this is the utilization you see in terms of check-in, that actually even if you control the flow, you need much more check-in desk that you actually have. What could be a solutions? What could be a solutions for check-in if you don't have sufficient check-in? Okay, now you have, for example, mobile check-in, internet check-in, but that was in 2007. You had the technology in place, but actually it was not so widely used. What other solutions can come in mind? Sorry, to Yes, uh, it is a solution, and actually Athens International Airport implemented uh, common use self-service kiosk, but the year after, so at the time it didn't have. So what we did actually, we found some additional check-in desks, and actually we arranged with the ground handlers and the charter companies to issue return boarding cards. So actually this will actually, will reduce significantly the, the requirements for checking desks, because actually they were, the checking desks were actually used in order to issue boarding cards for passengers that had lost the return boarding card. So the airport, it has, actually at the time, it had a satellite terminal building that was underused. Okay. So that was one solution. And the other was, we had also the express facility that was developed for the 2004 Olympic Games. So we had two facilities that were underused or not used at all. So we decided to put the, the one set of the funds in the one facility and the other in the other. Okay, in terms of number, the Liverpool funds were, had a much higher number, but because of the risk analysis, they had more in terms of history with UEFA we discussed, they were more likely to have riots and uh, aggressive behavior. That's why we decided to actually allocate them in the express facility that were completely isolated from the main terminal. Additional checking and actually also have staging areas near the stadium and then have the, the Milan funds at uh, the area where is the T, in order to be near the train station, and the Liverpool funds in the red area with the B, in order to use the buses to the airport. So, can you think of a way? So, actually, we had the different passengers, the two sets of funds, actually allocated by different hours, not actually their flights, because in every hour there were a lot of flights departing. Can you think of innovative way to identify the passengers quickly without having to check their boarding cards. How can we, what, what can we do in order to identify which passengers are actually departing at particular? Any ideas? Sorry? Y yes, in terms of the Liverpool and the Milan, but uh, in terms of the time that they are departing, can you guess? Yes, what, what things we can provide them in order to identify them quickly without need to, to check their boarding cards, that it will be a lot of people crowded. Yes, we know, but the thing is you have the fans there. Some of them are very excited about winning the final. Some other are, there are very angry. So what, what you can do in order to give them, in order to provide them, in order to identify them quickly. They say, okay, this group of persons are living now without having to check everybody's card. In the yes, but but <laughs> no, but the time of departure, not by team, by the the time of departure, the ones that. Are yes, we have done that. The, that's what it is. But how we are able to provide something to identify them by hours? You cannot find. So actually, <laughs> colored wristbands. So we had different colors for different time of departure. 
Okay, usually I give that to the ones that find it, so I don't know <laughs> how to... <should. laughs> I throw it... <laughs> <laughs> so, so what was that was the main solution and you see they were we were handing at the arrival point based on the returning flights the different times and that was something that was actually enabling us to immediately identify which of them are actually in the right place and and which the, the which one we need to guide them in order to leave later or before We said uh, we found additional stunts for the night, and we look as a contingency what will happen in a military airfield near Athens, Stanagra, that if there is a terrorism attack, that we can use that for the charter flights. And the appropriate roles, we had the emergency operating center at the airport, and we had venue managers at even uh, at every area of intense operation. The two staging area in the stadium at the express facility at the satellite terminal building. So clear communications flows were actually determined and were followed. So the additional security measures by UEFA regarding the type of, uh, regarding the team stereotypes that they had the track record. And actually the plan was successful because the cooperation and preparation of all the stakeholders in the community. And we had that to get resourcing extensive and detailed planning, operational flexibility, and coordinated delivery. So, that was the, the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you.